Kane Smith here from kanesmithcopywriter.com and today's video is the first of a new seven part series, The Seven Deadly Sins in Copywriting. Today's video focuses on greed and how you can use greed in your sales copy to your advantage, okay, to tap in to your prospects' emotions. But before we go any further, I'll introduce myself in case you're new to this channel. I'm Kane Smith. I'm a direct response copywriter who works for Agora and my business, kanesmithcopywriter.com helps course creators and coaches who hate selling get their programs into the hands of more of their customers, okay? So today's video, um, we're focusing on greed, but if you're not familiar with the seven deadly sins, I'm gonna run through them now. They're greed, gluttony, pride, lust, sloth, as I call it, or you could say sloth, um, envy, and wrath. Those are the seven deadly sins, and I'm going to cover those in a seven part video series. But before I go further with today's video on greed, I want to make a distinction between greed and gluttony. All right, those two sins, because a lot of people, myself included, before I started looking into this a couple of years ago, often think that greed and gluttony are two interchangeable terms. You know, we often say, oh, you're a greedy person or a gluttonous person, and they're often seen as the same thing. They're not, they're different, and it's um, important for the purposes of, of this series to make that distinction. So I'll quickly run through uh, the difference between greed and gluttony before we go any further. So greed um, is essentially the, you know, the, the desire to have something, all right, the desire to have more of something. But um, a greedy person typically wants wants to store it, okay, wants to kind of stockpile it and hoard it and grow it into something bigger. Um, often at the exclusion of other people, they often covet things that um, other people can't have, or they want or they want exclusivity of a resource of some kind um, that other people can't have. Um, and, and I suppose the best example is, is you know, like a, a wealthy person, right? They, they want more money. Um, you know, they, they 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 crave more money. They're greedy for more money, but they they want to grow it into something more. They don't necessarily want to spend the money. You know, they don't want to kind of consume the money. Um, they want to essentially stockpile it, invest it, grow it into something bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, that, that That's greed at play. Whereas the gluttonous person, you know, gluttony in action is someone who wants money, but they want to consume it. All right. And, and that would probably account for most of us. You know, um, that, that there are more gluttonous people in society than there are greedy people. Um, the, the gluttonous uh, person want, wants more money. Yes but we want to consume it. It's burning a hole in our pocket. We want to spend it as soon as we've got it. So that would that would account for like, you know, the typical person who lives paycheck to paycheck and they get paid and they start spending the money straight away on meals out with the family and, and drinks and they might buy a new TV or buy a new fridge and they'll just spend the money. So they get what goes in kind of goes out immediately and gets consumed. Um, that's, that's gluttony, all right? And the, the, both greed and gluttony can be used uh, using different tactics, different techniques in your sales copy. And we're going to cover gluttony in another video. But going back to greed, okay, I often think of the seven deadly sins as being emotions. I know that's probably not the, the you know, the seven deadly sins technically aren't emotions. I'm, I'm sure a psychologist would, would pull me up on that. But um, for the all, all intents and purposes of sales and marketing, copy and persuasion, the seven deadly sins to me are dominant emotions that we can tap into. Um, and in just a moment, I'm going to show you a thought exercise that you can use as well to, to determine which one of the seven deadly sins you want to apply to your copy. But let me home in on greed. Greed, um, as I've just said, it's, it's where your prospect wants more of something and they essentially want to stockpile it and grow it. And you can come at greed from two different places, either positive or negative, as you can with most of these sins. Um, from a positive place, you know, it, it, it really suits promise led copy. All right. So the idea of the promise lead, uh, which is positive language, right? You're, you're promising your prospects, um, an outcome that they desire or, 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 you know, um, an, an objective or a goal that they haven't yet achieved. And that's typically promised in the headline or in the subject line, or, you know, if, if you run into Facebook ads, you know, there'll be some kind of image or copy there straight away. That's very positive and, uh, hints at some kind of promise. You can come at greed from a more negative, um, mindset. You do have to be careful with this. Um, you know, if, if you want to, you know, as Gary Halbert once said, you want to get, you want to take someone's greed glands and you want to stomp on them till they bleed. Right. So if you really want to kind of, um, 
really stimulate someone's greed and tap into someone's greed. You have to be careful coming from a negative space because they're, they're greedy people are looking for opportunity. Uh, they're looking for a promise. They're looking to gain something. Um, so you can bring a problem uh, and put it in a greedy person's lap, but you need to get to the positive aspect pretty quickly. You need to give them hope because if it's just relentless doom and gloom, um, you know, you might lose the greedy person's interest because they, they'll, more so than probably any other, you know, they think, what's in it for me? I know every prospect reading your ad thinks that, but the greedy person is straight away looking for the opportunity, right? They want to see what's in it for them. So you, you can come it from um, a negative place. You can, um, you know, the fear of missing out, you know, tapping into their fear, you know, if, if you don't seize this opportunity now, somebody else will, you know, that that will get the, the, the old greed glands secreting, okay, the, the greedy person or doesn't want anyone else to have the opportunity. They want it for themselves. They want to hog it. They want to hoard it. So you can use FOMO in your sales copy, definitely, to tap into uh, someone's greed. And I, in just a moment, I'm going to show you uh, some examples of greed being used in, in sales copy, in sales letters and, and, and emails and stuff like that. I'm going to pull up my screen and show you some actual examples and talk you through those. But before I do, I'll just quickly walk you through my thought exercise um, that you can do, not just with greed, but with any of the seven deadly sins. Um, if you run through this thought exercise, you can you know apply it to your own products, your own service, and figure out which one of the sins you can use as essentially the dominant emotion. Um, and, and it could trigger the most response. You know, it puts you in a good place where, you know, ideally, obviously you have to test these things. There's no guarantees, but it puts you in a very good place where if you've done your research on your target market, um, you should know which one of these sins is the best to tap into. And it will give you the best possible chance of, of your ad receiving, um, you know, an awesome response. So here's a thought exercise. You do the product um, features and benefits and dimensionalized exercise, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's as old as the hills, I guess. It's been, you know, copywriters have been doing this for decades, direct response copywriters. Um, you, you basically make a list of your product or services features, what Eugene Schwartz used to call the performances. So list out the features. Then from the features, you want to pluck benefits. Um, you want to say, you know, my, my product does this and this enables my prospect to have this or do this. So you want to kind of expand those features into benefits. What's the benefit of that particular feature? Then you want to dimensionalize the benefits. All right. So if I get this benefit, what transformation does that lead to? Um, you know, you, you want to kind of really flesh out these benefits into something um, much more emotionally tangible for the prospect. So now you'll have a list of these dimensionalized benefits. Try to rank them in order. Which one of these uh, dimensionalized benefits, these transformations, these outcomes, which one of these means the most to your prospect? Which one would they find the most important? Which one would be the most magnetic to your prospect when it comes to them actually buying your product or service? So once you have them kind of ranked out, you, obviously you want to look for your top one. What is the core benefit? All right. <clears throat> and like I said, you want to have dimensionalized this and flesh this out. What's the core benefit? And then you can take that core benefit and you can run them through the seven deadly sins um, one by one. And more than one sin will typically apply. I'm not saying that only one sin is, is, is applicable to your products. Often, in most cases, you know, you can apply uh, multiple, multiples, you know, several of the sins to your product. But there will probably be one that stands out more than the other and it will fit your core benefit like a glove. You, you'll just know almost straight away. You'll take your core benefit and you'll run through those seven sins. And one of those sins will really stand out as like the dominant emotion and it will fit your benefit like a glove. So this is an exercise that I do, not, not for every single um, assignment I have, but it's something I found incredibly useful. I, you know, some people, I think Clayton Makepeace had a list of like, um, you know, like 16 or 17 different dominant emotions. And that's great. You know, I'm not saying this is the only way to do this. I'm not necessarily saying it's the best, you know, that there's lots of emotions you can tap into with your copy. But I find focusing on the seven deadly sins, um, it, it simplifies it, you know, because you narrow it down to seven and these are super powerful. Um, these are like, and, and the fact that they're quite, you know, the sins, they're quite negative. They're almost like vices. We're getting into the deep and often ugly emotions that we as human beings have, you know, the, 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 we constantly crave and desire things. And, and the, the seven deadly sins really, it, it gets kind of right to our core. All right. Like the, an almost primal animalistic urge to 
desire to desire something and to look for a solution. So this is why the seven deadly sins are so great. This is why you should look at them and you should possibly use them if you can um, and apply them to your sales copy. Greed is obviously a very powerful one. Um, is it particularly a- applicable to financial, you know, promises, newsletters, any, any products in, in the financial and the biz op space? Um, you know, greed is, is, will typically you know, whatever your product is, whatever the core benefit is, uh, greed will usually kind of fit that like a glove. But um, I'm going to bring up some examples, as, as promised, on my screen of um, greed in action in sales copy. So here's an example of greed in a headline for a sales letter. This is the sales letter for the email copywriter and agency owner, Chris Ozakowski, um, for his print newsletter product called Make It Rain Monthly. And if, look at this headline, can I show you how to make sales every single day from your email list without paying for ads or having to use constant discounts and flash sales? So bear in mind what I mentioned before, look at how this is really positive language, okay? This is a promise. It's promising something that the reader would really desire, make sales every single day. You can see that he's highlighted this, he's underlined this. Um, and, and he's making it sound easy, all right? You don't have to pay for ads. Again, think think of the greedy person who's frugal, right? That they want they want something and they, they, you know, they're not really, they don't want to consume, they want something and they want to keep it um, without paying for ads or having to use constant discounts. Um, so let's read a little bit of the lead as well. Dear friend, each month I send out a top secret print newsletter in the mail to over 200 e-com brand owners and marketers from 20 plus countries around the world. Now, think about this, a top secret print newsletter, bear in mind the greedy person often wants something that other people can't have. They often want to acquire something quite exclusive, um, you know, and, and, and something that other that is un- un- unattainable for other people, all right? It gets the greed glands pumping, as, as Gary Halbert would say. Um, each issue of Make It Rain, even the name of the product, Make It Rain Monthly, the name of the product totally appeals to greed, all right? Contains breakdowns of successful campaigns I've tested with my private clients at my agency, Aussie Media. Private clients, again, you're getting access to something that nobody else has. You know, it's greedy. You want something all to yourself. Formulas and templates you can easily adapt for your own products and cutting edge email marketing insight into what's working right now in the world of e-commerce email marketing. I'm constantly testing out new strategies and email campaigns with the e-com brands I work with and I publish the lessons I've learned in the trenches so you can learn and profit, all right, profit, greed from them in in your own business. All you have to do um, is take these email campaigns I give you each month and send them to your email list. Then watch what happens when the sales start pouring in, greed. And then he gives examples of the gains people have made. They, you know, um, Sean Anthony used a different email that I could pay than for a $13,000 promotion with only a handful of emails, blah, 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 blah. Did I mention this automated flow was selling a $20 product? Holy smokes, that conversion rate. Um, want me to start sending this, you, this top secret print newsletter in the mail to you every single month so you can start profiting big time from your email list? Pure greed. And you got this email here from Grant Cardone, which is pure greed, pure greed, right? Um, you know, uh, the, the, right down to the the subject line. She quadrupled her income in a year. Um, you know what greedy person doesn't want to see their income uh, quadrupled? <clears throat> if you're looking for an endless amount of predictable income, keep reading. Our sales have increased two hundred twenty six percent, and I quadrupled my friggin' income in a year. For over 30 years, I've helped everyone from individual sales professionals to Fortune 500 companies to grow and to install and execute high efficiency processes that produce predictable record-breaking results. Um, How to create an unstoppable plan for growing your business to 10x levels. Um, How to build a world-class sales team that pumps in revenue month after month. So all this language, all these promises towards, you know, we've seen the word grow twice here, Fortune 500 companies to grow. Um, growing your business to 10x levels, pumping revenue month after month, uh, promise of turning $15,000 into $100,000 to $1.7 million. Um, 
sales increasing 226 percent it's greed 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 uh financial promises of taking a smaller stake and building it into something much bigger the whole idea the whole premise of growing something okay we're not consuming something as with gluttony it's been something small is being grown into something big and mighty um that's greed all over let's take a look at this sales letter from um angel investing um this is a sales letter that i believe did pretty well helix scaling could fund your retirement one boston-based company just unlocked a brand new four trillion dollar industry investors who get in now stand to make 10 times or even a hundred times their money um i mean it i i don't need to say much more um other than obviously you've got the eyebrow crop here as well this has amazing potential from elon musk okay a man who um the average wealth uh the average investor who who wants to accumulate um lots of wealth that they look up to this man probably more so than any other and it's all here all right fund your retirement um a, a brand new four trillion dollar industry who investors who get in now stand to make 10 times or even 100 times the money um it, it, it pure appealing purely to greed here this is a heavy heavy greed based headline um very positive um mentioning a promise helping the reader achieve something that they haven't achieved yet but they they they'd really like to get there and this one here from South Bank Investment Research's finest, my pal Rich Hess, is the copywriter who wrote this. Uh, this is an example of a greed promotion which kicks off with negative language and it's tugging at um, fear of missing out, okay, FOMO. In 12 months' time, will you be sitting there again thinking, I wish I'd gotten in on that crypto when it was dirt bloody cheap? Not if I can help it. Today, you can make that kind of regret impossible I'll give you details on my number one crypto free of charge. It's on its way to your inbox now. Plus, I'll show you which catch-up coin could turn £500 into £5,000 in the coming years, starting in 2022, if you scoop it up now. Um, so obviously here, the there's a mixture of pride, all right, which is one of the other seven deadly sins, and we'll get onto pride in a future video. Uh, you know, that we do, the person reading this doesn't want to miss out. They don't want to feel foolish. Their pride, their ego is annoyed that they've missed out. But that FOMO taps into greed, okay? People that they want in on the action and they want to keep it um, to themselves. They, they want to gobble it up. Um, you can see there's a very greed-based promise here, turn £500 into £5,000. But the main headline in 12 months' time, will you be sitting there again thinking, I'd wish I'd gotten in when it was dirt cheap? Again, what we said about greed, people tend to be frugal. Uh, they want they want to get in at something uh, and grow something. They want to get into something when it's small and grow it into something bigger. Um, so this is an ex a good example of, of, of using like a, a problem um, and turning it into something positive, uh, which the, the greedy person always needs hope um communicated to them very early on you can use things like fear you can use negative language you can put them in a negative headspace but you need to, to put them into a positive headspace um as soon as possible so that's it that brings this video to a close those are the examples on greed um, i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can catch all the future videos in this series because remember this is the first of seven videos this is going to be a seven part series the seven deadly sins in sales copy okay the next video is going to be gluttony subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that one okay and in the description below you'll find a link to some free training on how to write great sales emails and overcome objections in your sales copy help yourself to that it's in the link in the description below thanks for watching this video and i'll see you again on the next one